Now that we have seen the concept of synchronization, it's time to understand a very important concept of wait and notify. So before we start with the concept of wait and notify, let's see what we have on the screen. So let's imagine there is a room and the room always contains some sort of parcel and the catch here is that the parcel could belong to anyone. So let's say there are four or five people and their parcel is getting delivered. So you need to go inside the room and then take out that parcel. But the room is locked and there is a security who is there on the room entry and the only way to access the room is to get that lock from the security. Once you have the lock, you can go inside the room, fetch your parcel and come out. But here is the catch. At a given point of time, only one person is allowed to access the room. Everybody else will have to wait. So how this can be implemented? So the way it could work is that once the security is giving a lock to anyone, they will allow them to go inside and fetch their parcel. And till the time whosoever is coming to access the room, the security could tell them that somebody is already inside the room. So you will have to wait till that person comes out. So once the person who is inside the room gets his parcel, he comes out and he hands the lock back to the security. Now the security will notify that the room has been vacated by the earlier person and anybody else who was waiting for the room to access it could go inside and get their parcel. But again, they will have to ask the security for the access to the lock and then they will open the lock and then they will go inside the room to get their parcel. So you see there is a mechanism which is kind of allowing just a single person entry inside the room in order for them to do something inside the room which is the activity of collecting their parcel until the time anyone is inside the room the entire room is considered to be frozen or kind of locked and nobody could access it and as soon as that person is coming out then they are handing the key to the security and after that is done the security is notifying to everybody else that now room is available to be accessed and then anyone from the waiting line could come and collect it. So the wait and notify methods work in a very similar way. So when a thread calls wait on the lock then that thread is suspended from its uh, execution and it goes to something called as a waiting state and when it goes to the waiting state then others who were in the waiting state earlier they have a chance to get hold of the lock and then they could start with their execution and as soon as they are done with their execution they could call notify and notify is a message to all the waiting threads that now whatever they were waiting for that lock has been released and then they could take that lock and access their critical section to work upon. So that is the whole idea behind the wait and notify methods in Java. Now we will see this with one code example and it will become more clear. So in order to demonstrate the working of wait and notify, I have created this class. It's called as wait and notify demo. So first let's start with writing the main method. Next we will create two threads. So let's call this as thread1 and this one as thread2. Let's start the first one. Let's start the second one. And uh, let's create a lock as well. So call it as public static private static final object lock and new object. Let's have two worker methods which will be invoked by the different threads that we have created. So first one is public static void. Let's call this as one and it will throw an interrupted exception why we will see it later so what we will do is we will synchronize on the lock and the first thing that we do is we print some message like hello from method one and then on the lock this thread is going to call wait and then we print some message back again from the method one or maybe back again in the method one makes more sense let's create the other method as well 
it will be called as two. So why did we throw the interrupted exception? So when we call wait or notify, these are interruptible and they will throw an interrupted exception. That, that is the reason we need to have this in the method signature. So let's put synchronization on the lock and uh, let's have this message hello from method 2 and now this time let's call notify and let's print some message hello from method 2 even after notifying and uh, let's call these methods in the threads so this will call one let's add this in the try catch block let's call two here and let's add this in the try catch block as well and now let's try to analyze what's going to happen so what we have done is we have created the thread one and it's going to make use of this particular method so what this method is doing is let's say thread one is started and after that the control comes here so in the synchronized block the lock has been acquired and this print message will be executed so we will see this message on the console now what does this thread do is that it calls dot wait so this thread will be suspended and it will go in a waiting state since the other thread was just started as well and what this thread is doing is it is calling method 2 the execution comes here and since wait was called so lock was available so this lock was acquired by this particular thread and this message will be printed that hello from method 2 and then we call dot notify so one important thing to note here is that even when we call notify then whatever code execution is left out for that particular synchronized block all those things will be executed only after they are executed then the notify will come in effect other threads which are waiting for the lock to be released they will acquire it and start with their process so basically after notify is called it's not that the control will go directly to this particular part rather it will print out the remaining thing which is hello from method 2 even after notifying and then the control comes here to this thread and then it will print this message that back again in the method 1 so let's execute this and see the outcome so we are here run wait and notify demo so here is the outcome so first is hello from method one and then we called wait so it goes to the other thread it says hello from method two and after notify we had another message as well so that is getting printed that is hello from method two even after notifying then we have the control back here which is back again in the method one so you may have a question that what is the difference between wait and sleep aren't these both same right so on the surface they do look quite similar but there is a key difference that wait is used for inter-thread communication and synchronization while sleep is used for just pausing the execution of the given thread for a specified duration and please note that this is just one implementation of wait method there are other implementations as well so when you call wait with this timeout information it causes the current thread to wait until it is awakened typically by being notified or interrupted otherwise if not so then after the time has elapsed it will be automatically awakened and there is another variant of notify which is notify all so in the case of notify it makes up a single thread but in the case of notify all it notifies all the waiting threads that are waiting for a given lock so this should be it for the introduction of wait and notify methods in java now let's go ahead and make use of it to implement the producer and consumer problem